Minecraft to do, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Betty Atruda, and welcome back to Stellaris, or, to be precise, welcome to Stellaris Ancient Relics, because Stellaris just picked up a new little story pack, adding a whole bunch of archaeology into the game, because at this point I'm starting to suspect that the devs of Stellaris are just peeking at my Christmas list when they decide what to add into the game. Yeah, there's now an archaeology expansion, so naturally, I'm going to dip back into having a look see at that. This isn't going to be a full new series, however, because this isn't a full expansion, this is just a story pack, which is the smaller, cheaper type of DLC they released for Stellaris. So it adds a few new interesting little bits and pieces, not enough to justify a full new series, but more than enough to act as an excellent excuse for me to just play hours and hours of Stellaris today. Anyway, I've just set up a little empire here, and while it wasn't mentioned in the feature list, I swear this guy is new, I swear there is one and precisely one new portrait. And it's this guy, on the end of Plantoids. I swear he didn't used to be there, but I rather like him, because he looks a bit like Kamen Rider. So the thing about archaeology is, no one's got any inherent advantages or disadvantages there. Everybody's equally as good at archaeology, so you can't just set up an empire that specialises in digging stuff up. So what I've decided to do instead is, as this is just a one-off, try a play style which I've never actually done before, which is the agrarian inward perfection style. I don't think this is actually a particularly good empire for conquering the galaxy with, because pacifist is and always has been kind of terrible, and xenophobes pretty darn terrible, just because xenophiles are amazing now thanks to the trade system. But I just feel like the plants that live in the garden, they're not interested in taking over the galaxy, they don't want to trade and engage with megacorps or any of that business, they just want to chill out on their farms, go to church once a week, and on the weekends, for a bit of excitement, do some archaeology. Alright, these are just some chill people who are super into digging up old relics, so let's just see how they get on. So, say hello to our brand new system right here, in a brand new, very empty galaxy. Not as empty as it looks though, obviously there's a bunch of stuff out here, we just haven't found it just yet. So, we'll go and check that out in a minute. But first, yes, everything's probably very familiar for the time being. But, if we actually go and check out our planet... Well, one, it's got some lovely rings around it, that's nice. And two, there's just been a bit of a refresh of the UI, especially when it comes to population, just to make it a little bit more on the readable side. So yeah, this is quite nice, actually. I never had a problem with the original, but I'll say this works just fine, too. And we are starting off with very high happiness and very high stability indeed, which is what these agrarian societies are very, very good at, because their farms are just spectacular. Yeah, the farm's actually producing tons of amenities right there, so we start the game with absolutely masses of amenities, together with plenty of spare housing, because even though we've only got a single city, yeah, every single one of these districts, and not just farms actually, mining districts and generator districts too, they now produce three housing rather than two. Cities, meanwhile, actually produce one less than they would do otherwise, so four rather than five. So yeah, you actually want an empire with plenty of farms, because you can kind of do without hollow fits and all of that. They just love farms so damn much. And because we're swimming in farms, we're also going to be absolutely swimming in food. So I may as well just immediately get the food policy straight over to nutritional plentitude for even more growth, even more happiness. Lovely. Anyway, let's get out to the world and do a little bit of exploring because, yes indeed, first things first, we need to find ourselves some archaeological dig sites. Ah uh, yes, and the other nice thing about the agrarian societies, uh, you get yourself unity very, very fast indeed, because Inward Perfection gets a flat 20% bonus to unity. So even though I haven't got my first temple down, I've got my first tradition available immediately. And normally, of course, I'd go for expansion, but I feel like the Inward Perfection lot, they're not up for expanding. Instead, uh, no, 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 let's get on with discovery here. Let's dive into that sort of a space. Because very, very soon indeed, that means we can get to boldly go sort out, and survey speed can be massively increased. Beautiful. And here we go, we've already got ourselves our first archaeological site. Now this one is, ah, this one's just an asteroid. So there's a good chance this is going to be a fairly small little thing, not like a massive epic sprawling tale of love and loss and betrayal and deceit and whatever. But the nice thing about archaeology is, even if it's a fairly small, easy event, there's always a bit of story attached to it. It just adds a lot of flavour to the world. So on this occasion, we get an immediate glance at what's actually going on here, because yeah, it's all divided up into chapters. That doesn't mean there'll necessarily be enough chapters to fill this entire bar. Sometimes it just comes to an end pretty quickly. But on this occasion, we've got robot debris. The entire surface of this small asteroid is covered in robot debris trapped in its weak gravity field. All of it appears to be military in nature, and there are enough combat droids here to outfit several armies had they not been shattered beyond all repair. 
So, something weird's going on around this asteroid. But, unfortunately, this thing is difficulty of three, meaning if I want to actually manage it at any reasonable time scale, I'm going to be needing a higher level scientist. So, we're going to leave that be for the time being, let my scientists level up just doing a bit of scanning, and come back to that once there are a little bit more skills. And we've drawn our first artifact for the Precursor event chain we're going to be following on this particular playthrough. Sadly, it's the Cybrex, which is one that already existed. But yeah, there are two new ones now. One about like a plant hive mind, and one who were the first Cynox to ever go into the Shroud. But sadly, we haven't actually got either of them on this occasion. But finding that does give us a minor artifact. So yeah, this is the basic currency of archaeology, which, and I'm going to point this out right now because it took me bloody ages to figure this out, shows up in a sub-menu in the Unity and Tradition tab. So down over here, there's a new relics tab. I couldn't find this for bloody ages. So for example, everybody can just sell them if you just want a giant pile of money. But once you've got two of them, you can actually start doing different things depending on what you are. In short, you can spend your minor artifacts boosting an ethics attraction as you wish. So proclaim superiority here to boost xenophobe ethics attraction, alternatively a religious proclamation in order to boost spiritualist ethics attraction. Over on the left, meanwhile, those are major relics. They'll provide you with a passive benefit all the time or a major temporary benefit that you have to pay to activate. They're pretty rare, but they're pretty darn cool as well. But back to minor relics because there's more for them yet. Here we go, I can literally declare that they belong in a museum, and as a result of that, for the next 10 years, culture worker output plus 20%. And culture workers are pretty good, because culture workers do provide unity, sociology, and I think amenities too on top of that. So they're not bad workers at all, and 10 years is a nice long period of time for only two minor artifacts, because the galaxy is just full of minor archaeological dig sites if you want to bother excavating them. Oh, and a very nice system next door over here, Parsax has actually got itself, yeah... A six mineral planet. Oh, this is a nice start, actually. This is lovely. I kind of wish it belonged to a better empire. There we go. I'm just going around doing my business. I've got two archaeological dig sites, literally a single jump away from my starting location. In fact, this is actually more common than I did in my little test game where I was just learning the system. So yeah, this is a little bit excessive, but still, they are everywhere. So, a secret hidden blast door, thousands of years old, previously concealed by rocks and dust. So for unknown reasons, scans can't penetrate the asteroid's interior and the blast door's impervious to conventional cutting tools. Meaning, we're gonna have to create a dig site on the far side of the asteroid in order to get inside. But, this one is actually pretty simple, all things considered. Difficulty only of two. So my scientists are levelling up nicely at this point. Probably it's fine that you just finish surveying that system, then we bring it into the Empire, because you can't actually do an archaeological dig nest inside your Empire, and then we'll get work in digging that up. Also, this is just a spectacular start over here. Just look at this system. This is lovely. 17 minerals, together with some trade goods, one planet that was a low-level anomaly, turns out to have two sciences across the border, and also, ooh, a nice alien mural. That's what's causing that. It's beautiful. And some really high-level anomalies I haven't even dealt with yet, so uh, this place is sexy right here. Alright, I think we're actually ready to start doing a dig here. So we've got ourselves a scientist who's got his way up to level 3, not bad at all, and a dig site here of difficulty 2. Select the dig site, and then assign a science vessel to get on with that. So, this science vessel's gonna be here for quite a long time, and I'm not sure whether this was intentional or not, but... Archaeology in Stellaris is basically functionally identical to sieging in Imperator Rome. So the scientist now begins his work, and every 90 seconds a dice is going to be rolled. The dice can return a result of between 1 and 10. To that 1 and 10, difficulty is deducted, the level of your scientist is added on. If you want to officially get a breakthrough and finish this first chapter, you need to roll a 14. So right now, that's impossible, I can only roll between 1 and 11. But, if I roll reasonably, I start getting some clues that get added onto subsequent dice rolls. So right now, I cannot break through, but I've got a 50% chance of rolling between 6 and 10, and thus getting one additional clue, and a 10% chance, if I happen to actually roll an 11, of getting two clues. Yeah, it's basically identical to Imperator Rome sieging, which is not a bad thing. I know Imperator's had a bit of a bad response from some people, but the war and the sieging bits, I think, work just fine. So, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with this system showing up here too. Ooh, and we've got our first neighbours, and this empire's not 100% keen on neighbours, and uh, they're already locking down this system with a giant space penis just to mock me. Right, so, uh, they've got this locked down. That's not great, to be honest. They might already have some of this over here. Right, we've got someone very close by to me. Okay, sociologists, get on with that, please. Let's figure out who they are. 
Here we go. So I'm about to roll a dice for the first time. And the dice is going to come down. Unfortunately, the dice did not come down with a good roll there. I rolled a five or less, so that was a failure. As a result of that, the next time I roll a dice, the probability is still the same. 40% of getting nothing, 60% of getting something, and thereby it getting subsequently easier. So the thing about archaeology is, it can generate some really, really good results, but it keeps your scientists tied up for a very, very long time. Because with every single roll taking 90 days, huge numbers of rolls required to take down certain harder archaeological sites, multiple chapters per site, yeah, you're going to be needing more scientists than you used to need. There we go, Discovery wrapped up in 2209, not as fast as it could have been, but pretty darn good. And yes indeed, we've had some changes to the Ascension perks too. In particular, yeah I think one vision's been improved, I swear it didn't used to have pop amenity usage attached to it. But the big changes are down here in megastructures, bit of a rework, this isn't actually part of Ancient Relics, this is just part of 2.3 so everybody gets this. Yeah you don't need Voidborn anymore to build habitats, everybody gets habitats just through technology. Which is good, I always felt Voidborn was a bit of a waste. But more importantly, Galactic Wonders is now purely for ring worlds, matter decompressors, and Dyson spheres, all of which have been massively improved. Like, ring worlds now get a small number of ludicrously expensive but ludicrously powerful districts. In fact, I've just started a new game and got into observer mode so I can show you this because it is slightly ridiculous. So, here we go the Alpha Complex over here. Research segment costs 2,000 minerals. Upkeep needs gas and 10 energy, but provides 20 housing and 20 jobs that convert minerals into research. So, uh, yeah, basic upkeep 120 minerals for 80 physics, 80 sociology, 80 engineering. That is really, really damn big. You've also got generator segments for tons of energy, and yeah, the Nexus segment for 70 housing. That is a flipping lot of housing, but it's really all about the research segment. That thing is lunacy, and I love it. And Dyson Spheres have been hugely improved as well, masses more energy coming out of them, which they really needed because it was just embarrassing how little they used to make compared to a decent trade network off a mega corporation. Here we go, we now know who we're talking to. So, uh, the Jomar Collective, and oh, they seem pretty sweet, and they're also a hive mind, but ooh. Hive minds are sometimes chill and sometimes murder monsters, so uh, we'll see about that. Here we go, checking back in with the archaeological site here. So, uh, the next round I rolled an 11 and thus picked up plus two clues. Then I rolled another 11, which became like 30% chance to do rather than 10 because of the plus two clues. Picked up another plus two clues, got a 10 there for plus one clues. And at this point, yeah, it's physically impossible to roll a five or below because I've got so many clues. So every roll is guaranteed to at least increase my probability of cracking it. But I've also got a 30% chance of just winning immediately. So yeah, it's kind of potluck how long it's going to take to do an archaeological site. But if you bring a good scientist, it can significantly speed things up. Just like generals in sieges in Imperator. And here we go, we've been told we've got an archaeological site event pending. Because I assume we got ourselves a good roll there. The blast door which once served as the structure's only entrance still can't be opened. But a passage has been dug from the other side of the asteroid. Drills have so far been unable to penetrate the thick outer walls of the structure, but this method still seems to afford the best chance of gaining access. Despite their age, the blast doors have proved nearly invulnerable. Very curious indeed. Get myself a minor artifact, and we move straight on to the second chapter. Because these things have a certain number of chapters, but you don't know how many it's going to be ahead of time. But yeah... This here scientist, he's been working on this for a long time, so this is why I'm floating three scientists relatively early on. Normally, I probably wouldn't bother having this many scientists this early. Alright, so Operation Dig a Giant Hole. The hole has finally been drilled through the outer walls of the structure inside the asteroid. The interior is a vast command center or a bunker of some description, littered with the decayed remains of thousands of dead aliens. Sifting through all of this to get a clearer picture of what happens is gonna take some time. Well, Crack on then, I'll help myself to an artifact in the meanwhile. And yeah, the difficulty is now 3 rather than 2, but my scientist is levelling up as well, so yeah, as a result of that, it's going to take less time than it would have done otherwise. But if I had a super high level scientist, I could actually blast through this a lot faster. And even more bloody archaeological sites have shown up over here, we've got another one over on the spur over to the right. Pretty simple one, all things considered. So, too angled. 
The surface is utterly without precedent in all of our exploration to date. Vast geological areas from mountain ranges to entire continents are suddenly cut by shapes far too geometrically regular to be natural in origin. So, uh, something's gone a bit wrong here. The planet's too perfectly triangular. I tell you what, I've just spawned in a crowded corner of the galaxy over here. There is a lot of stuff very close by to me very early on. But yeah, I do like everything being set to true random. So there's probably vast swathes of empty space over here. But yeah, where I happen to start, we aren't just very crowded in. Still, back to the alien bunker. So, the asteroid once served as a hidden capital of a relatively large interstellar empire that dominated this section of the galaxy several thousand years ago. From this fortified command center, the ruling elite, along with thousands of military and civilian officials, administered the empire while safe from the violent reprisals that their harsh policies often inspired. Contact with the rest of the Empire seems to have been handled exclusively through encrypted subspace transmissions and a single freighter which made periodic visits to resupply the base and transfer personnel. Ah, I'm gonna guess something went wrong with that one single freighter and as a result of that, they were all trapped without supplies, yes. Ooh, and I've heard a good noise and that archaeological site is now greyed out, meaning we've actually managed to figure out the mystery. So... What ultimately happened inside this here bunker? The final days. From what can be pieced together, it appears that the resupply freighter collided with the asteroid, the resulting explosion damaged the blast doors and destroyed the asteroid's subspace transmitter, permanently severing all contact with the outside world. Trapped and with no hope of rescue, the asteroid's inhabitants slowly succumbed to starvation or suicide. The last logs of their single surviving subspace receiver confirms that their empire, suddenly bereft of its capital, descended into civil war and anarchy. And there we go. As a result of that, I pick up a giant pile of minor artifacts. Beautiful. Still, we've got two other sites in our empire, or very close by to it. Let's just actually get both of them done as well. So yeah, we've got this one over here, the military robots just floating in space. And another one over here, where well, we've got ourselves... Ah yes, the mysteriously perfect triangular planet. Also, we're surrounded by empires who might be about to invade us or whatever. But I don't really care about that, I'm more just about the farming and the archaeology right now. Okay, good news down over here. So, the Jomar Collective has declared war on someone to the south of them, which means they haven't declared war on me. So basically, I consider this a win. And these two are actually in defensive pact with each other. So actually, that's pulled in everybody. Good, everyone can just punch each other in the face while I'm busy over here just digging up some lovely old pots. And my most experienced scientist over at the floating robots has managed to discover something. Nice and fast, in fact. We got a look in a 20% roll there. Upon closer examination, the Smashdroids found on the surface appear to originate from two distinct cultures. Technologically, the droids must have been evenly matched when they were still functional, but there are many subtle differences that hint at different design origins. Okay, very curious indeed. Help myself to another artifact. Get straight on, please, because, yeah, you're up to skill 5 at this point, and now, as a result of it still only being difficulty 3, yeah, straight away, we've got a much better chance of making progress faster. Now, I don't have full visibility as to what's going on in this war, but just in case an opportunity presents itself, I wouldn't mind just helping myself to some of this here territory. Right here. So, progress on the two robots here. It wasn't just a dumping ground. This is where they actually died. This was the battlefield. So many layers of debris suggesting a series of very intense battles waged over the better part of two centuries. But... Yeah, why so many resources on a single unremarkable asteroid? Keep digging, there's clearly something weird going on with this asteroid. And just as we actually begin work on this archaeological site over here, this one appears to have been finished up nice and quickly. So, the robot debris. So there was a treaty apparently. After a long and bitter war, the two empires inhabiting this corner of the galaxy some 200,000 years ago signed a treaty compelling them to settle all future disputes with arranged and highly regulated combat engagements between robotic armies. This asteroid was chosen as the site of the battles. The treaty appears to have been upheld for nearly two centuries centuries, preventing the outbreak of war on numerous occasions until one of the empires was caught cheating. And there we go, six artifacts on this occasion, but a thousand engineering research. So you spend a lot of time doing this, but the payoffs can be pretty darn big. Ah, here we go. I've got myself a new world down here. I put down a colony because, uh, yeah, there's now a thing you can actually do with these things. You can actually specify what you want them to be. 
colonies, urban worlds, mining worlds, agro worlds, uh, and that actually provides bonuses. So you now actually do have control over what a territory's going to do. So down on the Triangle Planet, meanwhile, the planet is virtually fractal. The same wild collisions of natural and obviously artificial geography visible from space are replicated on a personal scale planet side. There are mountains that are perfect pyramids at the bases, but with jagged craggy summits. Rough tundra that suddenly becomes a perfectly smooth plain of bare rock until another weathered natural formation bisects it. Yeah, things are weird, gotcha. Ah yes, here we go, I've actually found an L gate inside my empire, there's one down over here. So, that means immediately I can start picking up insights for it beautiful and if i want to that's actually repeatable so yeah you can get the l gates open super early just by spamming huge amounts of minor artifacts that's actually really cool now i'm seeing something promising down over here there is most definitely some form of invasion occupation going on in this part of the world meaning these guys are, are probably nice and busy right now yeah this is good stuff and my fleet I think I've actually just upgraded that recently to actually have, yeah, laser 2, damn it. We're pretty much ready for action. Now, the downside is they've settled two planets immediately. But those planets presumably have, yeah, that one's not actually colonized at all. And this one, no real visibility, not sure what's going on there. But with a single person on there, there can't be much in the way of defensive armies. I think we could actually launch a massive invasion nice and quickly, knock out that space take it for me. Let's get it done. That sounds fun. Yeah, there's definitely back and forth happening over here. This territory keeps changing hands, which means uh, their fleet is massively out of position. And I've got myself some small armies uh, ready to go. Right, guys, uh, move in. We're going to knock over two planets. We're going to take all this space. But first, we've got a lovely story about a ridiculously angled planet. The discovery of the first crashed flying machine set us on the right path and led us to the discovery of a multitude of similar crash sites littering the surface of the planet. Without doubt, these strange dead machines have something to do with the mysterious geometrical shapes that dot this world, but the extent of the damage caused by the crash landings from high altitude will make analysis difficult. Well, you guys keep digging, crack on with that, have some fun with it. Oh yeah, their fleet's over there driving these guys back right now. So it's going to take them a long time to get over to me. It's time to flip in go. We are conquering our claims. We're getting in there. We're going to flip in deal with it. There we go. Screw you, you stupid hive mind bastards. Deploy the fleet, please. Okay, deploy the fleet tomorrow. There we go. Now you can deploy the fleet. Here we go. One small basic station. I've not got any point defense, unfortunately. So... We'll take a small amount of damage there, but momentarily that thing will go down. We've already cut through the shield, so uh, laser 2 uh, will trim through the armor nice and quickly. Though, yeah, we'll be able to bypass our shielding, unfortunately. And, ooh, they've started counterclaiming. What a bunch of cheeky bastards. Right, you know what? Don't even bother waiting for that. Deploy the armies immediately. We should be able to just walk straight in. Oh, this isn't good, actually. So, um, they made peace. They made peace, like, straight away. So, that's... That's good. Right, okay, um, begin landing armies. You guys, fall over here. These guys, actually, what we can do is uh, throw up a platform defense, which I can just about afford, just to give us a little bit of extra firepower. Because sooner or later, they're going to show up, and they're going to be really, really annoyed about this whole situation. Because they're now actually... Are they actually at peace with everyone? But yeah, okay, so that war actually ended the moment I needed it to crack on a bit. One of those places has already been occupied. Uh, next up, just occupy this place too. So we can basically just immediately go down. Shouldn't be a problem at all. In we flipping go, please. Begin the invasion and we have occupied it. Right, nice easy there. The problem is, yeah, um, the rest of it. If we're lucky, they might throw a damaged fleet at this defense over here. Because, yeah, this station is ready for them. Strength 782. It's not terrible. So, uh, hello, what have we got over here? Oh, even more flipping dig sites. Hang on, where have we found even more flipping dig sites? Right, we found another one up there. Right, so that is the, what, fourth? Fifth? Yeah, there's quite a few of them. Right, I think we've actually got ourselves another archaeological site finished off over there. So, why exactly was this planet a perfect triangle? Analysis of the crash machinery gave an explanation almost too fantastic to believe. 
The machines were a swarm of automated cutting beam emitters flying in low orbit, sculpting the landscape with powerful lasers. A fragment of data from one of the broken automatons indicates the purpose of the endeavour was purely aesthetic. An art installation on a planetary scale, abandoned for some reason prior to completion. Imagine a civilization so powerful that it could shape entire worlds according to its whims, and furthermore did so purely for art's sake. So, 500 society research for that. Lovely. Oh, hello, we've got ourselves trouble here. Okay, so, their fleet is coming in, and this is kind of what I wanted to see, to be honest. The fleet is only 770. Get eyes on their technology level. Broadly the same as mine, maybe a tiny bit ahead, but not much. Oh, but the only way for my fleet to actually get back on top of them is, yeah, to go through their station, which I probably can't necessarily break. Right, so, interesting. What I'm probably going to do is... Uh, no, I'd never be able to get there in time. Okay, I'm going to have to back off and actually get back round over to here. That's my only bet right now, and I am at fleet capacity for the time being. So, uh, we'll just have to see what they do, because they're trying to make a break over to... No, there we go. I thought they wouldn't be able to make it all the way over to break. Also, um... Are you 100% sure you should be where you are right now? Yeah, it's going to take them a little while to break through this. There are proper guns set up on this thing. So just basically get the fleet moving in this position, please. Get them around over here. We might be able to pick them off while they're nice and soft and squishy. And we are actually starting to weaken them a little bit. Some of them are starting to take some serious damage. I'm not sure they can actually do this. No, the station, I think, is just about dead. It's on its absolute last legs. And no sign of the fleet just yet. I think the fleet is momentarily going to arrive. But when it does, it might well be able to mop up whatever's left over here. Because, oh, you poor bastards. You tried your best. There you go. Right, so we've lost visibility there. But my fleet has got to be... My fleet's on the way. All right, in comes the flipping cavalry. No, 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 no. They're not allowed to escape. Do not let them escape. Get after them. Chase them out of this system. I want those guys absolutely trashed. And come on, engage, 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 engage. Don't let them get away. Don't let them get away. They did not get away. Oh, dear. Now you're in a little bit of trouble. I think you are going to take yourselves one hell of a pounding at this moment. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff right there. Did we actually manage to kill any of them? Yes, we did. And that means uh, we can get ourselves some technology. Right. Go and actually get this sorted out for the time being. We need to go and, yeah, knock these guys down. Then it's over to their base. But actually, I'm pretty happy. There we go. That's flicked back to me. Right. With their fleet basically destroyed, uh, we might be able to knock over their platform if we're very, very lucky indeed. Oh, slight problem, mind. This is where their actual surviving navy is. Darn it. And uh, 1,100 strength. That's that's a lot. Right. Do they have FTL inhibition yet? Because if they don't, I might just work around them and say, screw you. That's all absolutely fine, actually. I'll just naff off over here and go and knock over this system. And you're going to let me do that? Come on. Yes, they don't have FTL inhibition yet. Lovely. And looks to me like they've decided to actually deploy what's left of their fleet to try and stop me before I take this over. Bad choice by them. Very bad choice. That just means I get to wail on their fleet a little bit longer. So, good luck with this, guys. Because we did this dance already. Didn't work out well for you then either. So basically, I've just managed to undo all of their repairs. That works for me. You guys get down over here. Knock down a little bit more. Because at this point, they're starting to get tired. They're not enjoying this one little bit. Oh, hello. What the heck's going on over here? They've just managed to... They're up here. How are you guys possibly up here? Right, there's... There's 885 of them who have just appeared... At the north of my empire. And uh, I'm not sure how they got there, to be honest. They must have had fleets already inside what was enemy territory when they signed a peace. Meaning borders are open until such time as the treaty wears off. Right. That's how they got up here. That's... 
That's mildly concerning, actually. Okay, this is fine. Everybody back home. We need to go and track these bastards down. Okay, the important thing is they shouldn't be allowed any further into my empire. So I'd like to take this territory back and reinforce it. But then again, I don't have too much of a problem with these guys, to be honest. Probably best. You know what? This is an important territory. Just start upgrading right here. We can just harden this border. The nice thing is, however, they don't have claims on any of this. So they can't get that even in a status quo. Yeah, as I would have expected, they're going for this territory. And this territory is uh, really valuable. I do not want to lose it, to be honest. So, guys, hurry it up, please. And yeah, tragically, they're just going to burn straight through that. Nothing I can do there. But their armor has been weakened quite significantly. My fleet is... Oh, my armor has also been weakened quite significantly. But... We're getting close at this point. We're getting close to moving in. If we're lucky, we might be able to intercept before they move over here. I don't know. I've lost visibility of that whole sector. Here we go. I think we just walked straight in on top of them. Hang on. So, I think it looks like, yeah, we've got their number on this occasion. We're going to take some severe casualties, but we are winning. We are definitely winning this one. How much have we lost versus how much have they lost? Yeah, there's a lot of retreating going on, but... This will drive them back into their space. At which point, we can be pretty confident we know which direction they'll be coming from thereafter. But, ooh, this is... Uh, this has been a bit of a brutal knockdown fight right here. And the last one gets chased off momentarily. Come on, guys. Get out of my territory. Thank you very, very much indeed. Right, we need to take some of this stuff back. Some of this stuff is really, really valuable. And at this point, with their fleet this badly knackered... Oh, they've managed to repair this fleet up now. <laughs> They're just keeping me dancing here. They are keeping me dancing. Right, I need to repair up my fleet. How badly damaged was... Oh, my fleet was just trashed. Oh, this is good though. 500 of them have moved up over to here instead. That's good. Those guys are going to really struggle. And when I say really struggle, they don't stand a bloody chance of penetrating that defense. So... Yeah, they've managed to... They've knocked this out. They've knocked that out. So they might be coming over here. But if they do, there's another 300 strength. And I'm building another defense platform right there. So you guys, uh, head over in this direction if you can. And okay, apparently you already did. Well done. So just get on top of them right there. Plenty of backup firepower coming from the actual station. Heal up there. Yeah, we can just hold here. You guys just hold... Uh, Right here, if you'd be so kind. Oh, and better and better, they just picked up a new war as well. So, the Zithorians, that's... Yeah, that's these guys down over here. Good, I could do with these guys having a nice second war to distract them. Oh, this is just perfect. At this point, they've just decided to continue throwing themselves at this one spaceport. But now, now my fleet's in position. Now, we've got backup firepower off this here space station. And they are just going to melt, barely doing any damage to me at all. And a lot of damage to them. Beautiful. Oh, and I think they've decided they want some peace. Right, so they're willing to offer peace on the status quo. And, oh, hello. They've actually managed to send... Oh, you clever bastards. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Were you trying to sneak some people around the side here? Is that what you were trying to do? Don't do that, you sneaky gits. I've built defense platforms for this. You know what? I'm just going to enjoy this for a second. Because I think, actually, my defense platforms are going to do a lot of damage to you. Because my defense platforms are just covered in flipping missile launchers. Okay, one of them's dead now. One of them is a bit on the dead side. No, 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 no. I've decided we don't actually accept that whatsoever. I want all of this too. Then again, they might be about to actually take out this platform, unfortunately. But then again, there's... There's only three of them left, actually. 180 versus 190. They've not got any point defense. I don't... Oh, no, no, no. Did you just attack that guy? Have you just opened fire? Please tell me you haven't actually opened fire on that guy. Turn around. Turn the flip around. We're not attacking him. He's too tough. Yeah, I don't think they're actually able to get through the hull here. This thing can actually basically just keep shooting them forever. So that's nice. Over here, meanwhile, I'm doing much better against these basic little platforms. There we go. That belongs to me. This is going to belong to me too. Screw the lot of you. Oh, and I like this little system. The final system. Hirim. 
loads of lovely asteroids floating around here. So just knock this over and that's it. I will happily call it a day right there. Now I'm willing to accept a bit of a status quo, actually. So I will be having myself, yeah, five systems and two entire flipping planets. There we go. Send that offer. You'll be accepting that, I assume. And as soon as that happens, I'll just help myself to a lovely, lovely bit of territory. Oh, that's nice. That's much better. How does your garden grow through slavery and annexation, as it turns out? And speaking of slavery and annexation, right, hello there, guys. Oh, right now, apparently, we're purging. I'm not sure we want to purge, necessarily. Like, purging seems a bit on the extreme side. How about, instead, we just enslave? The happy middle ground, so everyone's satisfied. Oh, right, hive mind. They're mindless drones. They can't actually be enslaved. Right, sorry. So... Turns out, it's extermination for you anyway. So, wasn't what I was actually planning. Sorry about that. I just remembered I was supposed to be role-playing as peaceful archaeologists who enjoy farming. Right, sorry, I got a bit distracted there for a second. But I think you see what I mean. There's not enough new here to justify a new series of Stellaris. These are nice little additions. They're full of flavour. It's nice to have little stories, especially ones with multiple chapters. So they've got a bit more detail going on. But effectively, these aren't just big, slightly elaborate events that tie up your scientists for a bit longer. And occasionally give you some slightly more interesting rewards. Now there is one more thing in the world which I'm just going to put myself into observer mode to see if I can locate. Here we go. It's actually just around the corner from me. So over here in the system of Rulan... We have got the big daddy of ancient relics, which is, uh, this is not just a world in which there happen to be some relics. This is a relic world. And if you zoom in on it, it kind of screams at you constantly. So you don't really want to do that. You want to zoom away from it because it is a little bit loud and noisy. I'm not certain there's only one of these per galaxy, by the way, but I've never seen more than one spawn. I did generate a few different galaxies and go into observer mode to check this. But yeah, there seems to be only one relic world per galaxy. So it's a bit of a big deal because this thing, of course, is an entire flipping planet of relics. But when you first reach it, you can't do anything with it. Habitability is at 0%. But if, in theory, you were able to clear it, go through the entire event chain, well, then you might just have yourself a big old city planet you can clear out. And yes, I know you're not happy with me being this close. And aside from a few tiny tweaks and balance changes, that's pretty much your lot in terms of what Ancient Relics is going to add. So, again, this isn't really supposed to be a massive overhaul. This is one of the story packs, so they are a bit cheaper. I'll say it's probably not quite as good in terms of the stuff it adds as Leviathans, but I would say it adds more than Distant Stars. Distant Stars is the same price as this right now. So yeah, make your own mind up based on that. If you love Stellaris and you just want a little bit more Stellaris, so here you go, with a bit more narrative flavour and some archaeological events thrown in. It's a nice to have, I've had a pleasant time with it. Personally, I'm biased because I love archaeology, so I struggle to give you an objective summation of this business. But, as I say, we'll leave things off there. This is not the beginning of a new series. I'm going to wait for the big political and federation revisions before I actually get into that. So I'm kind of hoping we see more in the way of politics, subterfuge, alliances, and how all of that fits together. So wave goodbye to the garden, ladies and gentlemen. We shan't be seeing them again, though maybe I'll allow them to spawn in my next game, just because I'm nice like that. We will be seeing Stellaris again, ladies and gentlemen. I love this game, and... Uh, as soon as there is the next big, proper, full expansion pack, we will be getting a new series. Hopefully, you're looking forward to that. I certainly am. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Stellaris Ancient Relics. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> Oh, he likes that! <laughs> the Romans touched me! <laughs>